one of the most iconic coins in American history. You will learn about the most important value this coin holds today on the Culture of Currency. Welcome back to your home for the stories behind the silver and the culture behind the coin. Today we are tasked with the challenge. Here is a coin everybody seems to know something about. My role is not to bring you to an area you already are familiar with, but rather to ignite a spark within you so that when you hold one of these coins, you vision a scene of the past and know the importance of an earlier time. Also, if you like my content and find it helpful, I urge you to hit the like button so that YouTube can offer it to others. When we reach 100 likes, I will give one of these buffalo nickels to a lucky commenter on this video. Now, let's hear the story of the creator of the mighty buffalo nickel. Let's follow the herd back to the late 1800s where we find a small boy sleeping under the rumble of a creaking train car pulled across the Midwest. James Earl Fraser, a young lad, lay upon skins of bison in a vacant train car. James' father, the engineer, tasked with pulling this train to its destination. You could say that these two were American royalty despite their roles as they are descendants of those brave souls whose timbered vessels landed as the pilgrims of Plymouth Rock. Being localized in Minnesota in the late 1800s, as well as traveling by rail across the open vastness of our land, provided James with a rare look into the lives of Native American cultures and practices. James witnessed the peaceful trade of goods between two peoples and witnessed the wrath of westward expansion. Being told to leave your home was not something a young boy was prepared to see or understand, but was clarified by his father when he noted that one day it was likely that these natives would be forced into the Pacific. James' father was a man who would know as he was sent with a group of men to recover the remains of the slaughter of Little Bighorn months before James was born. The decrees of the Potomac rang across the plain like a bell, not of liberty, but of treachery, as the oaths of expectations were broken. Little James had not seen the echoes of these battles in person, and through the eyes and words of his father had a fascination with their culture. James started to find soft stones and quarries and would carve out the scenes that he saw of Native American culture. He became quite good and eventually found his way to the Art Institute of Chicago. His early work was actually displayed at the Chicago World's Fair, which connects our Columbus World's Fair coin directly to this buffalo nickel. James hit it big when he crafted this from plaster. This piece is called The End of the Trail and shows both Native American and horse utterly exhausted. It was a commentary on the damage Euro-American settlements had created upon native peoples. This gained so much acclaim that it shoved James Earl Fraser into the limelight. A bit further east, President Taft wanted to create a new nickel and wanted something that felt American. This was the current nickel that was crafted by Charles Barber. Many call this the V-nickel for obvious reasons of the Roman numeral for five. Taft commissioned Fraser to create an iconic image. An amount of 2500 was given to Fraser, which in today's value would be roughly 70000 Fraser was noted saying, My objective is to achieve a coin that will truly be American and could not be confused with any other country. He also stated, I found no motif within the boundaries of the United States so distinctive as the American buffalo or bison. There it was, the principled inspiration. Fraser wound up in the Central Park Zoo where a giant bull bison named Black Diamond was studied and rendered in clay. This same buffalo eventually was sold for meat, but the head was taxidermied and held private. It has changed hands a couple of times, but has actually wound up multiple times on display at coin shows. So if you see a taxidermied buffalo head at a coin show that is authenticated to be Black Diamond, you are actually looking at the inspiration of what I believe to be one of the most iconic coins in American history. There are arguments about whose face adorns the obverse, but it is usually seen as a mix of features from three different chiefs. These coins were approved and minted, and on the 22nd of February, 1913, the first coins were handed out at a site on Staten Island to Indian chiefs for the groundbreaking of the National American Indian Memorial. 
which, so has it, was never actually completed, though the renderings of what it should have looked like are outstanding. The Amazing Buffalo Nickel was therefore in mintage from 1913 to 1938, when it was subsequently taken over by the classic Jeffersonian Nickel. Let's put this coin on our silver scale just to see, for fun, how it would have ranked in its day. On the obverse, we have a fantastic and oversized image of the chief. The details are outstanding and more realistic than any we've really seen up to this point. Many coins tout a neoclassical representation, but this seems to be more realism or academic classicist almost. These are such fine details. The way this coin was laid out did lead to the date and lettering to be smaller in comparison, where the layout on the dies actually caused the dies to not produce the quality over time when struck, causing many high areas to be worn. It is very common, therefore, not to have a date at all recognized on your coin. This one here we have is an AU, or almost uncirculated. As we look at it in comparison to these others, we see the common areas of wear. This is a fantastic and historic image and scores a 10. The reverse is immensely revenant as Black Diamond stands upon his domain. In a BU version of this coin, you would see details everywhere such as a pronounced tail and horn. We can see from my AU version many of these exact points, but with an oversized image and not a lot of space, we see a lot of rubbing and wearing and how that exacts a strong toll on these coins. The horn, hair, and tail are all indicators often of the quality change between AU, BU, and really everything less. This is, once again, a fantastic image that highlights an era gone by. I scored a 10. Mintage is our next area. This was minted at a time where every coin was basically for circulation. Therefore, I will score it a neutral 5. Cultural significance has been hinted at length in our opening of the video. A native people and a native fauna are hard to beat. This highlights a connection of many themes and elements of the American experience of that time, and therefore I have to score it a 10. Collectability is where we must travel next. Yes, kookaburras and queen's beasts are collectible in their own right, but coins like this have an extra level of collectability as they hold beauty and historical provenance. The highest score we can give a coin is a 10, even though I would consider this to be in a higher class than even a kookaburra. Uniqueness is our last area. There was only one Native American present on a coin before this, and this is the first buffalo I've been able to find on a coin in general. It is distinctly American and only was minted for 25 years, which I find to be fairly short when we compare it to many of the other coins we see today. Given that this was the first buffalo coin I could ever find, and that once again it was more of a realistic art style and has two themes that are distinctly American, I think this has to be a 10 for uniqueness. It is truly revolutionary. This brings us to our final thoughts and score. I'm sure you've done the math with me and seen that this Buffalo Nickel has scored an elite 55 out of 60, placing it in the upper echelon of silver coins. We have noted the inspiration as well as the legacy of this coin, and it is, in my opinion, the most American of coins, and also one of the most unique in our history. It is a beautiful image, and it still captures my attention every single time I see one. It is my hope to one day own a BU version, but that part of the race has yet to be run. Until next time, please remember to stay classy and current with the culture of currency.